Okay, so we are live. Today we have a special treat because we are doing something different. Well, this will be the second time that we're doing this, but I got this new program and I'm like, man, we should probably use it. Vicky has agreed to be so gracious and give us a few moments of her time on a Saturday. Um, but for those of you who well, I'll, we're, we're going to get into your history and stuff because I'm sure there's plenty of people that, that don't know who you are. But for those of you who are familiar with Vicky, you know she has released. She has, Vicky, how do you like to say it? <laughs> I've shed. Shed. She has shed over 200 pounds, 203.8 to be exact. <laughs> All right. And so one of the things that people always ask me is, Chris, can you do a follow-up with this person, that person? How are they doing now? So we are going to do that. We're going to do it live. So for those of you who are just not familiar with her story, we're going to do a little bit of background on her story. And then we're going to give you all an opportunity to interact and, and chat. And uh, you know what I mean? let's answer some questions, figure out how is it that Vicky has been able to maintain such an enormous amount of weight loss over such a long period of time? And so this is what y'all been asking for. So we're going to get into that right now. Vicky, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really always genuinely appreciate interacting with you. You have like the most amazing energy. Uh, people always love seeing you. So we're, we're very happy to be able to do this appreciate it very, very much. I got all giddy, giddy and excited when I saw I got to connect with you again. I was like, yes. <laughs> um, looks like, okay, so Vicky, you can see those comments coming in? Yep. Yep. All right, cool. So before we really dive too deep into this process, I would love for you to just kind of give us a synopsis of, you know, what, what your experience has been as it relates to your, your holistic wellness journey. And then um, while you're doing that, I'm going to go and grab one of your, your interviews so people can go and watch the full story. But just so you know, if someone's brand new, who are you? Well, my name is Vicki, as you can see there. Um, so you want just a quick kind of Reader's Digest backstory, right? Yeah, I mean, you could give, you know, okay. we got some time. We got some time, but you know, okay. you don't have to give us all the details. Well, Get, what's going on? Oh, yeah. They can, they can watch those other videos because I go in full detail. So right. I'm Vicki Shannon, as you can see uh, from whatever direction is here. Um, I live in Central Florida, and I have been fasting um, every single day in some form, um, predominantly now in uh, intermittent in maintenance now, since August of 2018. And throughout this entire journey, um, like many of us, there has been challenges. There's been victories. There's been experiences um, throughout my journey that uh, could have derailed the average person. But throughout my journey, um, like Chris said, I've shed, not lost, because I don't want to find it, over 200 <laughs> pounds while um, also midway becoming a widow and having to recalibrate my lifestyle, mindset, and everything. Um, and really the reason why I started intermittent fasting uh, in the first place was because where I was at a weight of almost 400 pounds at five foot 11, um, I knew I was looking death in the mirror. And I mm -hmm. had recently, not long ago, um, lost my two grandparents who were my only remaining family close to where I live. And like I said, I, I truly felt that I was approaching death if I didn't take action to start that day. And honestly, like throughout the entire fasting process, every single day, um, I love it. It's my sense of stability and my happy place, really. Like it's my happy place every single day because I feel like my mindset where I am now compared to where I was is night and day. Absolutely night and day. I, I'm the same person, but I'm not the same person. I feel I'm like Vicky 2.0. <laughs> and this is a feeling, a mindset, a sensation, overall way of life, an outlook of life that I would highly recommend for anybody that's just like stuck in that rut of like, I'm never going to, I'm always going to be stuck. And it's, and I help people with this too. It's a mindset shift. And we've, without going on too far of a tangent, that those historical beliefs that were given at such an early age will define you if you let them. Mm -hmm. If you wake up one day, you realize 
this isn't going to define me. I'm not going to be like labeled as per family friends from way back when. Don't let that chain you in and re realize your potential. Through, you realize your potential through this process. And I'm getting goosebumps right now because I'm like, I'm in the <laughs> field. I'm like, ah, it's, it will change your life in the most dramatic, awesome, challenging, easy, but difficult way. And I recommend it for everybody. Absolutely. 100%. I literally was having this conversation yesterday with one of my clients, um, just just looking at like my personal life and my journey and how like it's not just about shedding the weight because no, no. that that like opens a door. But yeah. then you get you get to like walk through this door and rediscover a whole different outlook on life. Yes, and it really is. It was like a few months into this, maybe like and I think it was around the two to three month period. And as I'm sure you can attest to it, that when you get fat adapted, once you get to that certain point, it's almost like the veil goes whoop. And you're like, wow, this is like 10% about the weight loss and like 90% about fixing my shit. Sorry, fixing mm -hmm. my mess, like my emotional verbiage, that hamster wheel that spins in our, it, Ooh, I'm getting chills again. Cause that's like, <laughs> people rock your world and flip it upside down, but you gotta be like, mm, you gotta be in it. And I always tell people, you have to love this. You have to love the good. Obviously, um, obviously you're going to love the good, but you gotta love the bad that comes right with it too. Like, so. Yeah. And, and that's an interesting point, right? Because a lot of times we do look at life as good and bad and it's not, it's not good and bad. It's really it, about your, pers your yep. perspective, right? And, and, and yeah, I, I look at it, I look at it as positive and negative and negative, yeah. not to mean like something bad, but just the, the opposite of positive. And, right. you know, right. when you look at the, the body, the cells, like the, the cells need, water that's charged negatively and positively you can't have, you have positively balance. charged water right you got to yeah. have that balance and i think we need to do a better job of accepting and and learning from things that we would perceive as negative or bad yep 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 so it looks Look like you might have hug. some i'm giving hugs <laughs> I'm giving hugs. you got you got some fans in here and i'm sure many people have seen your story um yeah. Just just out of curiosity, just to, you know, for, you know, once again, those who just don't know who you are yet, mm -hmm. what was the what was the main method that you used to, you know, shed that much weight? And what was the period of time that you did it? Um, well, like I said, I started in August 2018. I reached that end goal of where I wanted to start to transition into a maintenance rather than a focused weight loss effort. Um, it was my two year anniversary actually, um, yep. August, 2020. And that's amidst yep. like what 2020 had to bring. Like I was like, sorry, again, I, I swear a lot, but I was like, <laughs> whatever. It was like blinders on, let's go. Like I had a goal to accomplish and I didn't, because I was still fresh a widow. So I was like, come on trauma world. We got this. And I was like, Rrr. like, not mm. bulldoze, but like in my mind, I was envisioning like, we're just going to push through this. And there's, there's things coming at us. Let's push through. Let's put, and I, I imagine like mama duckling, mama duck with like her ducklings and like, come on, let's go. Like pulling me and my kids through this mess, but super focused all throughout 2020 and hit um, over 200 pounds shed um, in August, 2020. So two years it took me to do it. It was predominantly um, one meal a day after I became fat adapted, but I knew, and I tell my folks this, anytime I um, get asked this question, my method changed so much. I was constantly bopping around, even though predominantly I usually, and even in maintenance, like I kind of, I do those daily check-ins and I'm sure you advocate for it too, of like, you wake up in the morning, how am I feeling today? What challenges do, you th do I think are gonna be coming? What is my initial plan? What is my fail safe? Like if this doesn't work out, Am I going to be okay and happy with doing this method instead? Um, it's been for dedicated weight loss efforts. It's been predominantly OMAD. Um, and if I have a moment of like, whoa, this is challenging. Like, for example, when I became a widow and other really like stressors, I'll just be like, 
I can't handle food coming into my body without it tipping me over my point and like going back to like binge Vicky. Um, so I knew that come us up when a challenging situation comes up, it's like, I just go into an extended fast. If I tend to eat later, I'm deliberate. I'm aware I'm conscious with no distractions because again, mm. distract my distracted mind. will just, it's like, Oh, I'm looking over here. And this just keeps going. This reflex just keeps going and going. Um, and that we're not going backwards. We only go forwards. So I did do like a significant amount of extended fasts as well. Um, predominant, my experience with extended fast was anywhere from like two to three days or a week or so. My longest was 14 days. I would love to be able to go longer. Um, I just think it was a time thing at that time. Um, and I just, I didn't really need to go longer, but I know I feel really good um, if I'm stressed when I keep it at an OMAD, um, like if I'm just really anxious or upset about something upcoming or responsibility, <laughs> even bills. Like I've had moments where I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this, whatever. I'm just like, and we're gonna OMAD it. But then mm. when I am in that process of putting the meal together, and this is kind of tied into what I was talking to you about before with my experience recently traveling for school and learning about the blue zones and how the preparation component of your meal is part of your journey as well. Like what is your intention with the food that you're putting together for yourself and maybe not just for yourself, but for your family and how much that also matters too. what you use to break your fast matters. Um, but all that together, I'm very, I've over time. And again, this is what I really love about this journey is that I'm in control. I'm not on anybody else's timeline besides myself. And that I like that slow, like the turtle progress, like the tur tortoise and the hare story. It's like, mm. I'm okay with this because this feels permanent. The more I'm attentive to these methods and the reason why I'm changing this habit or mindset or food eating behavior, it's going to be more of a permanent change that I know I'm going to be, um, you know, benefiting from long term. Yeah. So w when you when you very first started this process, did you go into it with the mindset of this is going to be permanent change or did that come later? It was two weeks in. Um, like I said, I was almost 400 pounds when I started. And like many of us doing every single other method. Um, and I think, honestly, it was my prior knowledge with this partially ketogenic um, meal replacement program that I had done um, myself and I worked at a couple different chiropractors offices. And it was like, and it, this is that diet culture thing that I'm like, people, we don't need this. Blah. You don't have to overcomplicate it. It's my mindset coming into looking for a different opportunity to shed weight. Cause before finding out about fasting, I was like, I'm going to look up keto. Cause I knew about keto um, and ketogenic based eating before. So that was my intent looking down the YouTube rabbit hole. And then um, finding a testimonial on fasting was what set me in motion. And I was like, mm, this seems too good to be true, but you know what? I'm going to try it. And it was more of a focus on um, the fasting method itself. And that's been like a big pivotal thing to why I am building what I'm building and doing what I'm doing is having the fasting be the focus first right out the gate because those dietary and food choices will change over time and it's not something we should overburden ourselves from the beginning with a method um, that could you know I reading and seeing all this stuff online and watching videos and stuff and it's like fasting changed my life and I was like really is that gonna work for me hmm yeah. so I wanted to like Eliminate the factors of like, oh, she changed her diet and oh, she worked out more like we're just do, we're just changing the fasting. We're just putting that in the lifestyle that is already like the same that kept Vicky at almost 400 pounds. Let's see if this met this just change does anything. And two weeks of just a 16, eight, just a 16, eight, not changing anything else, not my activity, not my food intake, 21 pounds gone wow and I was like, we are doing this this is my, <laughs> method. I found my sauce like i knew yeah. it. it was just 
But I remember looking and literally, again, I apologize. I swear. I was like, holy shit. This is it. Like, <laughs> this is my method. This is my method. And it was like, and I knew at that point, I was like, what's next? What I need to like, turn it up from medium to high. Like, let's go. And mm. I just, I thoroughly enjoyed and still do that varying effect of like, that it's so flexible, that it's not has to measure, has to measure, right. that it's, how are you feeling today? Well, let's see how we do when we, you know, do it from this hour to this hour. Or if something comes up, let's just fast through the day and break it tomorrow or whatever, whatever the situation may be. I knew this, that was my method. I was like, we're, we're doing this. And it was, yeah. and I think we talked about this before. That was the moment also that uh, ad for healthy wage popped up. And I was like, I'm going to bet money on myself. And I'm like, and I'm going to win. And I did. And just, <laughs> it was just like the, it felt like a domino and all the other dominoes just kept going down and they were keep going down. They're just more just from starting on this lifestyle and keeping up with it and keeping consistent regardless of what life has thrown my way. So I'm just like, I'm going to drink some water, sparkling water to that. Woo. <laughs> So one thing that I that I'm hearing you say, which I don't know if I ever caught this before, but yeah. you're telling me that when you when you when when life happened to you, you leaned into fasting versus mm -hmm. using food yeah. as a coping mechanism. Yeah. Yep. Like that's that's huge because most people lean back into old habits. You said yeah. no. I'm no. and and like the thing that's interesting is I was telling my brother Steve, this is a long time ago. Like if you fast when you're dealing with like, you know, relationships, breakups, divorce, deaths in the family, et cetera, et cetera, it doesn't seem like it, but it actually will be easier. It'll help you. You know what I mean? That and is so exactly right. That is exactly right. My mindset in the process of being a widow, like I said, I had people all like, and I'm a very, as I think we've kind of covered this before. I saw really easy. I'm very like, I wear my heart on my sleeve kind of person. Yeah. And that moment of being told, Hey, you're, you know, your husband is in the process of his, his body is dying. And I knew it was like, no food. It was like an invisible, like, like this is a no go zone besides water. Wow. Vicky, eat this, eat this. And I'm like, Nope. Cause I knew, I knew like every time somebody was like here, I saw in my mind, big Vicky back. Ho, 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 just crying, eating, crying, eating. And I was like, that's not a promising future. That's not honoring his memory and legacy and things that we discussed and goals that I told him that I was going to meet for, not just for myself, for my kid's future. I was like, nope, nope, that's backwards. Not going that direction. Nope. Man, that's amazing. Um, I do want to touch on the healthy wage. And, yes. and one thing is like, we talk, I see people in the chat talking about this is motivation and, you know, motivation. But it, would I be correct in saying that your journey was far beyond just motivation? You had a, a level of determination. There was a level of planning. There was a level of consistency that would that also needed to be there in order for you to be successful. Or do you feel like motivation was the key? Um, I think... I feel my mindset is what kept me there. And my mindset, I feel like really, cause I'm a visual person and artsy fursy, I feel like it was like, it started off as like, we ever played with Legos as a kid and you have, my kids are in like a Lego phase right now. And you start off with a few Legos and you're like, okay, I got this. The next day you're like, I still got this. Yeah. And you just, and it gets bigger and stronger and that mindset and focus determination it keeps getting bigger and stronger and reinforced more and more. The more you're consistent, the more you're consistently placing those bricks, the more you're consistently showing up to place those bricks, right? And you just become this impenetrable wall, that force that you're mm. just like, <clears throat> over time, you're just like, this is my default because I know it makes me feel good. It's providing the results that I want. It's changing my life. Things are improving. Overall, like to every effect of my life, things are improving and they continue to do um, the more I consistently keep up with this uh, lifestyle. It's it's some, become something that I truly enjoy and look forward to every single day. Absolutely. 
and we're we're definitely about to get um we want I want to get into that a little bit deeper because that's really why I wanted you to come on. But tell us about the healthy wage experience because I don't think everybody knows what it is and how it works. Okay, healthy wage is um, a website app um, that allows you to bet money on yourself on your journey. So it's investing in yourself. And as I've told them through the interviews and the commercial that they flew me up for, um, for winning and featuring me, um, it's not a matter of if you win, it's when you win. And truthfully, like, I'm sure I could have been done with my healthy wager sooner than what I initially checked out as, but I knew if I didn't extend it, then I wouldn't win it at all. So I was totally fine. Again, I was on nobody else's clock besides my own and I extended it twice. But I won. Mm. Like I still won. I made my healthy wager. I checked and met the goals. Um, and I knew this was I wasn't competing with anybody else besides me. But you pay into it every single month um, and it, it goes towards your pot that you will get back. So long as, again, you keep consistent um, with that and you, um, you know, meet your goals. Excellent. Not- Excellent. And the people at Healthy Wage are awesome. Like they are so fun and just true kind caring people they want everybody that signs up to win they want you to win they really do that's that's amazing i think it was a pretty cool concept we actually did something similar we called it the biggest winner contest yeah. it was maybe back in yeah like 19 2019 or something like that we yeah. did that and yeah. um yeah it's it's i mean a lot of people do it a little bit like even in workspaces it's like hey let's see who can lose the most weight yeah. winner gets the pot type thing um and it's actually something that I want to do again, which is why I wanted to kind of talk about it and see the your the benefit. But obviously, that that was something that was like icing on top of the cake, right? Oh yeah, oh um, yeah. Just a, yeah, a great bonus just to help kind of give you that extra little nudge or whatever. But uh, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's really about once again that consistency, that that motivation, the determination, and your headspace, staying focused on where you you know the goals that you need to accomplish. Absolutely. Um, so, so what, one of the things I really want to touch on today was what it's 2022. It's almost 20, it's almost August, 2022, right? Yeah. So it's, it's almost been another two years. Mm-hmm. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Did I interview you at your two year mark? I think I did. You did. I don't remember if that was our first interview or our second one, though. That was the second one. The first one was um, in January of 2020. Right. Okay. So. so I'm a fan, so, girl. I remember these things. <laughs> I, I feel I feel pretty good about remembering the, the, the second interview, but the first one I didn't remember when. Um, <laughs> so now here we are, you know, almost two years later. And yep. people always ask me, Chris. What's going what's going on with Vicky? What's going on with Justin? What's going on with Steve? Like, let's get an update. How is it that you were able to shed to over 200 pounds and now two years later, you haven't gained it all back? Like, what's nope. the key? Nope. Um, it's understanding and appreciating through the process of shedding the weight, taking my time, having daily check in. Um, I've adopted this my mindset, I lean more towards like kind of Buddhist philosophies of practicing awareness, lots of meditation to the point where I really absorb and maybe I'm even hyper aware of the moments from day to day. And all these, you know, they say time flies when you're having fun, right? So yeah, throughout this whole process, having that playfulness, uh, awareness, and appreciation, that attitude of gratitude throughout this entire journey has made me appreciate and not take this for granted, not have a, oh my gosh, I can't wait until I shed this. I can't wait until Mm. I get into these pants or am am this size. Mm -mm. No, nope. I'm, this feels good today. I feel, mm -hmm. look at myself in the mirror and be like, I have a different headspace where I can be like, yeah, mama, woo, and like look at my, check myself out and like feel good, like goofy, silly, playing in the moment and having this mindset shift again completely from where I was when I initially started. This is permanent. Like this is who I am now. And I have that gratitude, awareness every single day, every day, every day, mm. for everything. That is- that right there, that's so key, right? So it's, it's living in the moment. It's yeah. once again, like you said earlier, 
uh, taking the taking the positive with the negative and and just fully immersing yourself in the overall experience, then mm-hmm. having backing that up with a mindset that says this is my new norm. Like I'm yep. I'm constantly moving towards excellence. This is what I do now. Right. Yep. And yep. and when you combine these elements, your lifestyle shifts. And then so you got to you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because you're going to be you know, you're not going to eat the same food. You're not going to be able to do the same activities. You're not going to be able to, you know what I mean, maybe interact with people the same way. You might even need to find new friends or, you know, different family members to interact with yep. and yep. being open to that journey. I think that's the biggest key. But I also think it's one of the biggest hurdles for people because what they want is they want to be able to live the same life that they've been living and get the outcome. Yep. I see that a lot. They want to get that permission to continue what they were doing before while expecting dramatic life changes. And you can't have that. It doesn't happen. It doesn't mm. happen. Nope. That's, doesn't that's happen. the oh, I'm like lit up now. I can feel all the goosebumps. <laughs> that's, that's exactly, that is exactly it. That victim mentality And again, that's what I feel is like the broken diet culture of needing to reach it by this date, playing the victim, uh, that comparison theory and not being in the moment. It doesn't make you appreciate the struggles. Like, why are you in this mess to begin with? Because reasons X, Y, Z and, you know, your past. Let those hard moments. Oh, I can feel the tears. I apologize. (laughs) Let those moments, those potentially life wrecking altering moments that could wreck you let that be your reason why let that be your reason why oh sorry Mm. let that be your reason why you need to live you need to be here you need to have this purpose you have a purpose right Mm. let it be your like "Mm, the fire under your ass sorry let it be the fire under your butt right let it light you up and be like this is why i'm not giving up on 100 percent like we're in a hundred percent agreement. I I've had some pretty um, difficult challenges in my life, especially when I was much younger, just a young man exploring. I've always been like more of a risk taker and, and crazy things would happen to me. Like I'd be in, I would end up in crazy situations and I could not understand why, because I was so determined. I was so positive and I felt like I was always doing the right thing or at least moving in the right direction. It's like, why does stuff keep happening to me? Like in spite of And it's like what I started to learn as I became more of a mature man is this is what you asked for, right? Like you asked to be resilient. You asked to be capable. You asked to have experience. And in order to get these things, you've got to put yourself through the fire as well. You know what I mean? And so (laughs) it's like once you once you understand that concept, it shifts your perspective on things that come your way, like the, the circumstances I'm so weird. Like I genuinely appreciate, (laughs) right? Like me too. Oh, and, and all my people are weird too, but I genuinely appreciate when things don't go my way because it creates an opportunity for me to overcome and learn and be better. Yes. You know, you're speaking my language. When I bring new people on, like um, my other side business that I have, I'm a owner of a paint and sip franchise. And when I bring on people or like, even when my artists do stuff, I, I, I want, I'm like in the back of my mind, I'm like, I hope there's like a small challenge that like, cause I don't want anybody to be that overconfidence. Like, Oh yeah, I got this. This is so easy. Blah, blah, blah. Like that. It's going to be like, all right, universe, you have like, here we go. <laughs> I love that. That's how we grow and thrive. And we just, become all the more strong, tenacious, resilient. We get that gritty aspect of like, yeah, come on. What else we got? Like, and you have that mindset shift flip of like, I got this. But on the same time of like what you were saying, if you are manifesting and freaking out again in your mind, and I've read a lot, like I'm going down the audible and like the secret law of attraction rabbit hole. Like I've been doing this for a while, but like not too much. (laughs) Um, if you keep perpetuating on what you don't have and what you're not good at, like you will stay there Get out of your own head. Like we have to get out of our own heads and goofy realize, be weird. This let yourself be weird and like obnoxious just within your own like space and parameter, if that's your thing or whatever. Um, But even if you just, it takes you a while to look at the mirror and be like, 
you know, I can do this or celebrating the victories. Um, on a side note, that reminded me, one of my favorite, I don't know if you, you might be a fan of Ted talks. Do you like, you like Ted talks, right? I do. I haven't seen them in a while, okay. but I do like them. Yes. So there's one I'm going to highly recommend um, everybody to check out. And it's called um, Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg. Y'all need to check this out. And the, his premise is Tiny Habits. Who I'm getting the goosebumps right now. Tiny <laughs> Habits will add up to change. But also those tiny habits, they deserve to be celebrated. Those mm. moments, it's, it's like non-scale victories, but it's a little bit more than that of like when you're in moments, your mundane moments every single day and you're like in your mind, you're like, oh, oh yeah, I'm glad I feel good about that. Stop in your tracks and be like, yes, woo. Like even if it's just you, even if you're walking in the supermarket and something comes to mind, you're like, yeah, take a moment and own it. You're reprogramming your, you know, your, sub, your verbiage, your self spinning verbiage in your mind. Mm. Stop and celebrate. And really that's that awareness I was telling you about. Like this is, these are the moments of your life. This is your story. Take your time. This is your life, your life. Like we, we can't rush it. Don't take it for granted because one day it could be it. Uh, absolutely. I want to take half a second to uh, shout out Eric Freeman. We appreciate the super chat. Vicky is awesome. Oh. This channel has helped me in my weight loss journey and continues to be a motivation oh. for me to stay the course. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a digital hug right there. Oh, it we, is. We appreciate that. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to touch on something that you said just a little bit while ago. You talked about uh, you know, the the resiliency and tenacity that you build by kind of putting yourself through the fire. And I was thinking about plants. So I, I don't know if you know my like theory on this, but like I, I've came up with a whole word. I call us plantimals. I think that we are more like plants than we are given credit for. And mm -hmm. um, when you think about plants, because I've, I've studied essential oils, um, the better, the the more potent plants, the, the plants that are going to give you better oil, stronger oil, more healing power are the ones that thrive in the wild. They're in mm -hmm. nature. And mm -hmm. the reason why is because when you're in like a farm, you're in this nice coddled sec area, you don't deal with the bugs. You don't deal with the different animals. You don't deal with the, the, you know, the brutal sun and the brutal winters and all of the things that plants in the wild have to deal with. So as those plants develop, one becomes stronger than the other. And it's the one that is, you know, go going through all of the struggles that becomes stronger and ultimately produces a more potent oil. So once again, I, just making that correlation between us and plants. And um, I think we, we should want that, right? Like we should. Mm -hmm. um, we should. You also talked about like energetic awareness. And this is not something that we should like breeze over because what people don't understand is um, positive reinforcement is so important. Uh, affirmations, right? Positive affirmations are so important, but you can also create negative affirmations for yourself. Ooh. So it's important to focus your energy and your, and your attention, your words on the positive and just leave the negative alone, right? Mm -hmm. There's this mm -hmm. exercise that, um, that I saw. I've seen it a couple times now. I love it. Um, but it basically talks, I think, it, I think there was a snippet of it from a TED talk, actually. And this doctor yeah. or P PhD was talking about the brain doesn't, it doesn't know how to, um, it, it, it can only, it focuses on the negative, right? The brain just, it focuses on the negative. Oh, I'm sorry, no, it, it skips the negative. It doesn't, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Right. It, it doesn't focus on the negative, right? So, okay. What he said was, he was like, don't think of a pink elephant. I right? saw that same TED talk. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so the, the, the important part is, and what I want you all to get, even though I messed it up a little bit, if oh, you yeah. say, if your affirmation is, I don't want to be fat, I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be whatever. What you're actually saying is fat, sick, disease. Yep. yep. So you, you got to reword your affirmations and say, I'm going to live a long, healthy life. I'm going to be free to travel and experience. I'm going to build healthy relationships, right? Because 
the 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 mind doesn't understand the don't and this goes for like children and animals as well when you when you're training animals don't stand on the couch so now he's gonna get on the couch yep. you know what i mean yep. that's been a very so. one of my favorite parenting hacks is from a very early stage because before they were born i went to school for teacher education like that was my initial you know degree process was to be an art teacher and i have been so i knew the child psychology that relates to adult psychology of if you say like don't sit on the couch or don't do this like that's all the kid hears so i say you know can you get off or like you say what you want like you mm. manage to say what you want like <laughs> and and you know what that is a great um habit to adopt and apply across the board and it's a little more challenging than what people might think. When you start being intentional about your words, you see how much of the negative that you put into, yeah. you know, your thoughts and things. Yep. So yep. I think I think that that's an amazing takeaway. If you get nothing else from this interview, which I'm sure they've yep. already gotten some amazing yeah. things, right? <laughs> but if you can if you can focus on just that one thing, you will see outcomes in your life that you never yeah. would have expected. Honestly. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So tiny habits, guys, go check out that TED talk for sure. Cause Vicky yeah, is definitely tiny habits Vicky. Like fog. Gotcha. Um, do you when it comes to like dietary habit? Because mm -hmm. I know you had mentioned keto earlier. Yep. Like, what's 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 that like now for you? Um, right now I am I call myself, except I it again, it's also flexible. Um, I've been meat free since 2014 and I have my gallbladder out. So I don't eat meat at all. However, um, I've been vegetarian, prefer vegan, but with two kids that I don't say you have to blah, blah, blah. Like I let them if they want to have, you know, have opportunities to have meat or whatever. Um, I let them, I let them. Um, so I'm predominantly in my household. I'm predominantly vegetarian. Um, I do have times where I am vegan, but it's a very flexible, very heavily um, plant-based, very heavily plant-based, um, even more so since recently um, in uh, June, I was studying abroad for two weeks in the Blue Zones in Acaria, Greece, um, and being immersed in that culture with understanding of like how your food intake is a you know important part of longevity and health and wellness and all that. Um, there was even more so the emphasis when I came home. And of course I had the uh, affinity for and appreciation for lots of vegetables and fruit and stuff. I feel like that trip just kind of like turned up the intensity a little bit more. So yeah. like, you know, I've since that trip have developed more of an appreciation of creating things at home, keeping things as simple as possible but also being practical and present um, in the process of putting the food together. Like I was talking about before of appreciating, like, I, cause I know I have a lot of anxiety in the kitchen because of obviously where my history has been. And throughout my weight loss journey, I was very intentional in not spending a lot of time in the kitchen again, to avoid going like back down rabbit hole. Um, so it was very like, it was kind of like a love hate relationship. And I knew getting back into the kitchen had to be, you know, playful, exploratory, um, not mm. stressful. So I was deliberate and changed and adapted things. And I still continue to change and learn um, things that I like to make that I feel good about that make me feel good that, you know, sustains my life, my children's life at the same time. Um, that we all just enjoy. And throughout this entire process, I feel like it just gets more and more refined, but more um, meaningful as time goes on as well. And it's it's hilarious. And anytime I've talked to other parents and stuff that uh, they talk about like their kids' favorite food. And if I have the opportunity to be like, hey kids, what's what do you want me to make for dinner? Both of them are gonna be like, mom, make curry, make curry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that they're even to the point where they like I, I we almost almost every single dinner i have sliced cucumbers and they have to have salt and a little splash of apple cider vinegar and my kids will fight over not like ah but like <laughs> they'll like right. stick 
bubble over making, uh, getting the rest of the cucumber slices. I'm like, I'm just having this moment here. I'm just looking down. I'm like, I'm, I got to just do one of yes. these. Yes, <laughs> because so many see this is what I don't hear from you is excuses. Like no. throughout this nope. entire time, you literally you just don't make excuses. Yeah. Um, we we had a we had a saying back in the day: if you want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't want to do something, you'll find an excuse. Yep, and I'm a we, 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 oh, there you go. Like we can all make up excuses for everything, big or small. It doesn't matter, right? Um, at yep. the end of the day, what what's the outcome you want, right? Do you do you want your child to be one of them children that only eats chicken nuggets, especially yep. knowing that you know chicken nuggets are slowly killing them? Like seriously, mm -hmm. it's not even real food, right? Yep. Or or maybe through your actions and the things that you're showing them, because children watch, they're very oh, yeah. observant. So they yep. see your changes, they see all the outcomes you've garnered from it, they're learning, and now they want to make those changes as well. You know, because yeah. like really beautiful. people, people need to remember when they were children, like everybody yeah. thinks, oh, children, just they're so just, ah, uh, you know, they don't be thinking they're just everything. No, like they're observant. They think they process. Yeah. They have desires. There's certain things they want in life. And if they yeah. see you, if they see you as a way to learn and a springboard to get to the desires that they want in life, they will follow you. They really will. Yeah. Um, it's, it's beautiful to see not just their the eating habits the behavior how, again how all that is connected and how i made the changes in me and i can refine and guide and see the path ahead of them too just by the changes that i made for me and the overall household and how that's going to affect the rest of their life like it gets me worked up and i'm like Ugh, trying to keep the tears down here but it's it's really truly beautiful and it makes me extremely proud of them and obviously of myself throughout this process oh yeah 100 percent. run it up you yep. lose 200 pounds by the end of the year you already got a slot on the show if you lose <laughs> 200 pounds if you lose 200 pounds by the end of next year you got a slot on the show uh, all right the, everybody, yeah, do things in your own time. This is what yes. we've been we've been talking about today. Vicky lost her weight over the period of two years. Like, take your time. It's your journey, but make yeah. sure that the changes that you make are are solidified. Right? You don't want to just do it real quick and get some outcome. Make yep. sure that you're doing it the right way. Yep. That reason why that reason for doing it is going to grow and evolve. Like, this is such a living evolving process and people mm. have so often i'm sure you experience it too they come into the journey and they think it's going to be this and it's rigid and stuff no like let it be a growing beautiful thing that you participate in because this is going to change your life it is going to change every aspect of your life if you let it if you're consistent if you are ready if you are ready to like take on the good the bad like you know, you get something new, like a new car or a new house. You have to be okay with, you know, the benefits and pleasure, happy happiness that it brings you. But when it stresses you out or, oh, you need this or this repair, whatever comes up, we have to love the ups and the downs. You have to. Mm. You absolutely have to. Because, again, like I said before, this is your life. This is your time on this earth. Like, what do you want it to look like? The timeline mm. is up to you. Yeah, one hundred percent. I wanna, I wanna, you know, open up the floor, take a couple questions. If you all have questions, make sure to throw them in the chat now. We're gonna do a couple questions. I know I saw a few questions um, previously, so I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and uh, let's kind of, let's kind of, you know what I mean, do a little interaction. That's why I want to go live to to be able to do some some interaction here. So let's see if I can find something real quick. Okay. Let's see here. Out of curiosity, since I'm late, has he touched on loose skin? I'm not yet. <laughs> we have not touched on loose skin. But what I could tell you is when, it, when somebody loses 200 pounds, the traditional method, the amount of loose skin that they have is enormous. So, mm -hmm. Vicky, do you have loose skin? Um, how have you been dealing with loose skin? Did you have surgery? Tell us about the loose skin journey. 
Well, I'm going to ask like, first off, I, is it appropriate to show like midriff? <laughs> I don't think anybody would have a problem with that. Okay. All right. Cause I love showing it. And I'm sure you guys have talked on your channel about the term autophagy. If there was an opportunity to petition or sign up to be the spokesperson for autophagy, I'd be like, <laughs> me, 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 pick me, pick me. Okay. So first off, I'll show my arms. Um, this is my arms, no surgery, like no, no skin removal surgery. All That's natural. Like, okay. None. So, um, but the thing I'm most proud of, and this has even gotten better since we last talked as well. Um, okay. On my midriff, and again, this is not going to go like, oh, but I will show like <laughs> this area right here has gone. This, wow. This is, that's 200, like this is, Two that's it. 200 pat wow there's literally nothing there i mean there's nothing, two, there's nothing. Two, 200 pounds like if y'all i want now what i want y'all to do i want you to go on youtube and i want you to look up loose skin if you find somebody who's lost just 75 pounds you will see so much loose skin right mm -hmm. and also from from people who do like a lot of weightlifting and and cardio they have tremendous amounts of loose skin Yep. That is incredible. Yep. And this is what we've been talking about for so long, autophagy. Yep. So the fact that not only because, you know, you lost that 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 initial amount of weight, but because you've been to continue to maintain your fasting yep. regimen, it's tightening even more. Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. Yep. Uh, autophagy, all right. do you need a spokesperson? Because I'm like, I'm your girl. <laughs> hey, autophagy, if you're listening, hit her up. <laughs> <laughs> excellent excellent let's see if we got some more questions down here uh vicky do you do any type of coaching counseling consulting i do let's yep so okay. um my, the, my business my second business business that i'm building um is called the fasting focused lifestyle um mm. and that's fastingfocusedlifestyle.com is my website. Um, I'm actually almost done with my schooling through Arizona State University online to get my bachelor's in health sciences and healthy fitness science to become a board certified wellness coach through okay. the WLC after graduation and maybe even potentially after that um, become a licensed nutritionist in the state of Florida so um, I actually have in my network of like holistic, integrative kind of medicine uh, here in Central Florida, I'm close to friends with a lot of chiropractors who have sent me people to guide, inspire, coach um, because they, excuse me, because they knew me from the program that I did at their office before. And they're like, she's doing something completely like revamped and so much better now. Um, and they've reached out and said, hey, you know, come the time after graduation, if you want to do consults here, we can set you up an office or desk, whatever. Wow. So the, my options are, st I'm still figuring out what that path looks like, but I, I get goosebumps thinking about it because I'm, this is already affecting, connecting with people around the world. Like, mm. and the, this, my thing has always been from the beginning, realizing the power, it's like, I, I keep seeing Dorothy and like, I'm already, you have the power and you didn't realize it from starting this whole process, like waking up and seeing myself in the mirror and realizing right. now where I'm at now, like this all started because I just kept going and didn't stop Beautiful. to the point now where I'm able to connect and help guide, consult and support folks, folks from all over the world. And it's not just, Oh yeah, me, I'm inspired by you, Vicky. Like, the messages I get from people, and it, it brings me to tears sometimes when I see them say things like, Vicky, I've been silently watching you, and because of your journey, your story and stuff, that they've changed their life, their outlook, their health status and stuff. And that, like, as you could see, like, that gets me worked up. And mm. that's because of, I started on my journey, and that's having that ripple effect to other people in other people's lives. Like, I just want people to know they can live. They don't have to be emotional, like eaters for the rest of their life there's a big long beautiful life out there for you to lead and you can have it you can absolutely have it so the big thing for me is being the change i wish to see in the world and like 
honestly, like, again, I apologize, but telling diet culture in general to fuck off, like, that's what I'm interested in. Like, the yeah. gotta tell you something, gotta fix it, quick fix. No, like, show up for yourself. You deserve it. You're worth it. And you mm. can, you absolutely can change your life for the better. 100%. You are such a, a, a great example of the the greater effect because like i i don't know if you know everybody's not the same some people just they're just thinking about themselves that's fine that's completely fine i i I, you know i think it's good to be selfish put yourself first get your outcomes but you sometimes you don't know like the greater effect you're going to have like i didn't go into this my health journey i didn't go into this thinking i'm gonna build a wellness brand and i'm gonna share right. stories with vicky yeah. and we're gonna reach thousands of people you yeah. know what i mean i was like yo i'm sick i I've, yeah. i got an infection i got an irritation i'm i'm gaining weight i got brain fog i gotta fix it you know what i'm saying but yep. the greater effect that you have when you work on yourself is the one of the greatest unknown benefits of this thing mm-hmm. um, that ripple effect and that ripple. it just it, when I started sharing my process, so like, you know how we kind of catalog and journal our progress. And right. I, think it was, I think it was even my late husband that said something because I had shared one of my first before and after pictures just on my private, like, you know, now not so private, but like my Facebook of like, hey, this is, I'm just logging in, you know, timeline of in Facebook land. Um, hey, I'm at this, this is my before and after. And just the flood of messages and things. And then my uh, late husband was like, you should really get back to school to do to help people with this. Because he's like, you mm. can do it. You can do it. And it was like, can I? Can I really? And it was just, and it's been, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. <laughs> and it, I keep getting goosebumps. But it just keeps further and further. And more changes. More effect. More positivity. More things are continuing to happen as a result mm. of this lifestyle and it's it's beautiful absolutely beautiful it i just is. gotta be like <sighs> <Thank you. laughs> it yeah. is it is and and allow um allow it to breathe allow that transition to happen you don't have to go from zero to 100 overnight no. you know what i mean it's it's a beautiful journey uh absolutely. shannon Gaines as what to feed 18 month year olds so i could tell you that you know Plant-based food is amazing for children. It really yeah. is. Um, me personally, I would stay away from meats, dairy products, right? Because mm-hmm. dairy is pushed on, on babies quite a bit. And the, the science is showing us how detrimental like dairy is um, for many fine. reasons. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Lactose, the effect of lactose on the system. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and then, of course, what we're all starting to understand now is processed foods are going to wreak yeah. havoc on the gut, right? Mm-hmm. And and so a lot of the diseases that children are dealing with now, they stem from the gut. So if you can avoid processed foods, these meat and dairy products, and stick closer to the, the high water content, fruits and vegetables and things of that nature, I think fiber. that you're going to be good. They need fiber. Yeah. They need fiber. <laughs> they got to have fiber. You know what I mean? <laughs> There, it ha- babies with uh, that are backed up is such a major problem. Like yeah. babies don't release waste well, um, mm-hmm. which causes all kinds of problems. Mm-hmm. I could go into tangents about like I, I'm a huge anatomy and physiology nerd when it comes to relation of a relationship of that to like the whole fasting method and what goes on with the body and like all that stuff. It's just it. There's so many connections with what we're not like told that if you want to find out and learn about it it's the information's there but it's not always presented um first and foremost because as you know american culture is just like so sensationalized and oh lose this in x amount of days and do this for a quick fix like knock all that off knock it off Mm, yeah it's it's one of my great the greatest banes i'm on youtube right and because of the culture if I don't sensationalize my titles and things, people won't watch the content. Yep. But but like, it's yep. it sucks. I it's I fought against it for years. I I finally acquiesced. But what I've learned is, if we can lure people in, essentially with that, um, yep. once they're here, they'll see. Oh wait a minute! Like there's more to this than what I thought, and they become very mm-hmm. intrigued, and they really want to lock in. 
Yes. Um, let's see. We yeah. got another question here. Dirty fasting life. Dirty fasting. What is that? Nice. nice. <laughs> down, down and dirty. Okay. Dirty. What do you say to people who refuse to fast past 24 hours because they are convinced they are hurting themselves? Learn, educate yourself on what is going on inside your body and understand that it is a beautiful, natural process that the body knows exactly how to do. If you have stored body fat on your body, that's food, that's energy that your body can use. And as a side, as a little nerd, mini t nerd tangent here, your body... Yeah. As uh, obviously we know, for the most, most of us know, there are three forms of fuel that your body uses, fat, protein, or carbohydrates, well, glucose, right? And the most preferred form of fuel for the body is fat. Doesn't matter, doesn't, your body doesn't care if it's dietary fat or if it's body fat, your adipose tissue. tissue. There are, for every one gram of fat, whether dietary or body, nine kilocalories of energy for one gram versus four kilocalories of energy for proteins and carbohydrates. So fat is the preferred form of fuel. If you have it on your body, let your body stay in that extended fast longer. Um, and you're, you're just going to see incredible benefits from it. Not beautiful. hurting yourself. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the nerd. I, you, you, um, yeah. <laughs> people look, people like, different ways you know things broken down different ways people learn different ways um mm. I, I you you clearly have an infinity for this and i think that you're heading in the right direction with you know I your goal it. yeah I, I i i love it i love mm. it okay <laughs> um <laughs> so so i so i've been reading uh i've been reading dr funk's complete guide to fasting book i actually came across your page looking up a topic he spoke on so i'm assuming my page um, what's your take on human growth hormones? Um, human growth hormones. Um, I feel like that's on the same level or same like Avenue as taking the extra like, um, exogenous ketones or MCT oil and stuff. And all these things that we are putting inside our body, thinking that we are either nutrient deficient, which if you are unsure if you're nutrient deficient, go get tested, go get a blood test and figure out what nutrients you're deficient in before you go, you know, self-diagnosing. And honestly, if you want the balance, that homeostatic balance that can happen and will restore itself if we get out of our own way, if there is mm. truly a deficiency to whatever, you know, uh, nutrient, mineral, whatever, have it show up from a uh, doctor's exam blood test to know before you go putting things in. Because most of the time, from my experience and my nerdish little like avenue exploration, if we go start like self-diagnosing and putting stuff in that we don't know, what effect is that having on our digestive system and our overall health and what imbalances are going to be uh, coming to surface as a result um, of just whatever processed shenanigans we're putting inside? Yeah, it's actually funny you bring up going go and get tested. Um, yeah. We actually we actually partnered with a company called Let's Get Checked, Let's Get Tested, yeah. and um, basically they're they're a, they're a laboratory that allows you to uh, take you know they'll send you a kit so you can yeah. go on their website. You could choose what do you want to what do you want to get tested on. Where you know maybe you might have an idea of where you're deficient already. And then um, they'll send you the kit. You take the blood sample. You send it back. It's super easy. I did it. Um, I actually talked about it. And I got a link. I don't know if this link is going to work for every test kit. But if people are interested, try the link and see. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because they give me links for specific things. But if you mm -hmm. use this link, I just threw it in the chat. It's 30% off. So if you mm -hmm. want to get um, an idea of this exactly like how are you deficient? What do you need to focus on? Uh, then you could do this. And they've got like hormone tests, you know, testosterone and all that. Now, I yeah. wanted to answer this quest question from a different perspective, just in case, because um, the other thing about human growth hormone is the body naturally produces it. Right. Yeah. So with fasting, we see that, you know, there's almost a, a, a 2000 percent increase of production of human growth hormone over the, the period of a 48 hour fast. This yeah. is why it's so popular to like do intermittent fasting while you're building muscle training, working out. 
Um, yep. So so from the other perspective, right, not taking things in from the outside, but utilizing fasting to manufacture it yep. yourself, I think is a tremendous value. I like, think that's so much better. It's a better um, opportunity to do it that way than to put stuff in. Let, you know, the opportunity for your body to balance um, and create what it needs to create and balance. Naturally. Exactly. And you, you hit on it. Because when it when it comes to deficiencies and things of that nature, you want to find the solution within, right? There's yep. something going on within that's mm -hmm. that's that's um you know probably going to be more of a root cause for your deficiency versus just trying to take something and just yep. throw it in. Not to say that that can't help, but yep. uh, we gotta always be looking to address core issues first. I agree. Um, and if you there are any deficiencies, honestly, your best bet is to get things as naturally and minimally processed as possible. And if this is a byproduct in food, naturally growing produce, there you go. There, there you go. go. I love that. Uh, Vicki, they trying to figure out your age for having oh, such great I skin. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I am 38 years old. Young, 30? young, I should say. I'm 38, old, like, Thir yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You. You know what's interesting? Like, why do we even say that? 38 years old. Why why do we even say that? We're, someone, someone, There's right? We, we talked about like uh, words and, and just being intentional with words. Someone taught us to age ourselves verbally. Mm -hmm. And so now that we have this, this program that runs and every year we age ourselves every year. Yeah. And then they also taught us to associate age with sickness and illness. So now... We're slowly aging and causing ourselves disease just by saying, hey, I'm 38 now, I'm 39 years old now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. That kind of like that mindset, like I have, again, like we were talking before about the mindset, it's I tend to not take things personally anymore. And like where I used to be so emotionally reactive before things just and uh, videos and stuff that I've made and shared across like my channels and things. And when people say like, I, I literally had an, a lady on, I don't remember where it was, but I just, it makes me laugh. It makes me laugh where she was so insistent on trying to tell me not to lie. Vicky, don't lie. Just admit that you had surgery. You got to, you know, you, oh. hit the, you hit the stars. And like old me, that would have been, I would have, would have pissed me off. It would have wow. been something that I take offense. And I stopped for a second. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take that as a compliment because if she is so insistent that there's yes. no way this could be the way that I achieved my losses with no, like without surgery, I'm like, wow, that's a great yeah. compliment. Thank yeah, great you. Compliment. And I have yeah. that same mentality. Any insult that I see, like when I post my stuff, any insult that I see, I'm just like, okay, thanks. Thank you. And any reply back, if I reply back, it's always wishing them well. And yeah. You know, if they come at it, say like, oh, blah, blah, like that's so unhealthy. I was like, actually, I'm the healthiest I've ever been. But I appreciate you like sharing concern for my health. I was like, thank you. You know, big hugs, like truly, genuinely, not like yeah. uh -huh, big hug, not <laughs> just like if I'm met with negativity, I'm not going to respond with negativity because it. Right. What is that going to do? Like it expands it. Like, yeah. Entirely. Yeah, yeah. Above it. Um, you're you're on the right track. Uh, so yeah. Stephen, yeah. Stephen, yeah. and Stephen more than John got the same type of responses. People mm -hmm. were so upset. As a matter of fact, if y'all go and look at Stephen's uh, second interview where we do the before and after, um, they they tried to say the picture was photoshopped. They oh, was I've like, photoshopped too. Yep. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Like. like I was like, do you even know that I have no idea how to do most right. of online stuff? I'm like, that's a compliment. I was like, yeah. you think I'm that talented to know how to do Photoshop? Woo! All right. Thanks. <laughs> Vicky. <laughs> Vicky, they want to know, did you do any dry fasting? No. No nope. dry fasting. All right. Nope. The other... Oh, go ahead. Um, I think it was... Uh, I'm sure with being in this community, you're aware of like the different channels and different people um, that share content as well. From very early on, because of that's his approach, Cole Robinson with like the snake diet and stuff, 
I love watching his like in your face, like the way that he starts his videos and stuff. I was like, that's cool as hell. Like that's because <laughs> it, it doesn't, bo- it didn't bother me. Like I was at the point where it was not bothering me, but his advocate, um, advocating for the dry fasting. I was like, that's a little like, uh, I know my body needs water. I know I get thirsty. I was like, mm, we're not doing that. Well, I mean, I think, I think that that really speaks to like, your journey, when you really look at your methodology, like how you lost the weight, you said you you didn't fast longer than 14 days. Most of the fasting was around three days, plus mm-hmm. intermittent fasting and one meal a day. And you just did it over a, a long period of time. So the consistency. So you don't have to do intense fasting regimens to get these results. Right. Nope. It's, it really nope. it really just depends on how you want to approach things. Yep. And it's fun. It's fun. Who doesn't want to just have that like ability to challenge what they know as a previous habit before, like to know that these changes that are happening in your body, like you're doing this, you're doing this for your future. Absolutely. Uh, we had a couple questions in a similar vein. We're, we're talking what, you know, what fasting did she do to not have loose skin? What was her fasting regimen? Um, you know, I, we kind of already touched on that, everybody. So you all might be coming in a little bit late. Um, I would encourage you to watch the replay. But I kind of summed it up just a few minutes ago. Like, you know, it, was, it it wasn't, from what I can tell, it was kind of more intuitive, right, than mm-hmm. just having a hardcore regimen. Yep. And the more structured and if you, and this is why uh, throughout my journey since very early on, I'm sure you've seen like different pages and content and channels, people that say, I'm going to do this long fast, this long fast. And then when they don't make it past day two or three, they just go way off the rails and they beat themselves up and they're like downward spiral. Mm -mm. Every time that I have intentions and we, we were talking about mindset and just like your, you know, um, what you want to manifest in your life every single day showing up. Okay. I still want to do an extended fast. Uh, am I think I can push through? And again, and thinking in your mind, what does the rest of the day going to look like for me? Is there something challenging? Is there something that I have to do that I don't want to do? Is there something, you know, what does it look like? What is it something that I can continue this? Or do I, am I going to be faced with the you know potential of having to break it later? Right. Have that sense of checking in. Like I, I hate it so much. Check in with yourself not just in the morning, but like throughout the day, how's your breathing? Like, are you freaking out over something? Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to eat. I got to eat. You know, this, if you have like adult FOMO, because you know, it's not just a kid thing like that. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to be in this place with these people to have this now uh, for a year ever, you know, once in a lifetime, whatever. We have to be present mind to decide for ourselves and what we want in these moments without feeling guilty without punishing yourselves, without throwing yourself off the rails. Um, and lastly, one little thing quick. Um, I saw a thing. I don't remember where I saw it, but I remember the message. It was, you know, when you go off the rails, it's okay. So long as you are consistent with getting back on and you don't consistently have those off the rails days. Yeah. Have a day where you're just like, okay, yep. Don't beat yourself up over it. Just be like, I let myself get like emotionally, like, you know, meeting those needs. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, realize you got this, get right back on and to know the journey that you're on. You've got this. You've absolutely got Mm. this. Facts. Facts. Y'all got to learn to give yourself grace. None of this, none of this is designed to just be simple, easy peasy, yeah. like a walk in the park. Because what we talked about earlier, um, the the being able to be a resilient person comes with going through things. And yeah. look, ultimately, if you look at life as like almost like a game, right? You're yeah. playing this like an RPG, a role playing game, and your yeah. character starts off with one. You know, he's at level one or she's at level one and then they got to fight and they got to level up. They got to find new armor and they become more resilient. So those things that used to be used to turn like flip you all the way over. Now they can't. They're nothing to you. Right. (laughs) 
They just like, bounce right off of you. They yeah. just bounce off of you. And that's what you want. You don't want to be a wimp. You don't want to be just the wind blows the wrong way and you topple over, right? We want to be resilient. Yeah. So we got to learn how to like look at our obstacles and things in front of us as as stepping stools. Like they're, they're going to help us get to that next level. Um, did you do any juice fasting? Um, I actually, it's funny that you say that. So it was my late husband and I, um, we experimented with juicing and we went down the whole Joe Cross rabbit hole of like fat, sick and nearly dead. And that whole thing, we did that for almost a year, but it was not in a, Hey, I'm doing it to lose weight. And it was like, not on an, even the same timeline, um, mm, gotcha. of my fasting journey. So it was like, we bought a juicer and did all that stuff, but this was like years previous that we did that. Years ago. Okay. Shout out to Shannon. Shannon, Ooh. my sister. Shout hey. out. Shannon, Thanks, Shannon's girl. doing her own thing. I'm so proud of her. Um, let's see what else we got. We take a couple more questions. Some of these are, I think, kind of like duplicates. Uh, let me see. Is it okay? Let me see what this is. Is it okay? Is it okay to weight train during the dry fasting and water fasting? Um, I'll I'll answer part of this, and I'm gonna kick it to to Vicky. So when it comes to dry fasting, I really dry fasting is a really serious method, right? Like, um, there's a lot that comes along with dry fasting. I do not I do not recommend exercising or training with dry fasting. Uh, water fasting is a little different. Water fasting does allow you a little bit more leeway. Um, but I would, if you're going to like exercise and weight train with water fasting, like we talked about earlier, I would keep it to shorter durations. You know, um, for weight training and stuff like that, 48 hours is kind of optimal if that's what your goal is. Um, I mean, you're not losing weight. You're just building muscle and stuff or strength. Uh, but Vicky, did you did you do any gym? Did you do anything in the gym? Do you do the gym? And did you do any fasting in the gym? So my, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because it's so contradictory, again, towards conventional diet culture. My preferred uh, activity uh, workout is actually body weight resistance and um, doing like working, again, like just coincides with everything we talked about before, working with what's already here. I love doing things like planks, like yoga, handstand, mm. different yoga moves. And um, there's this great... Uh, physical therapist that I follow on social media, um, Justin Augustine, I think is his name. He does these, like, granted, because of my previous in, uh, history with like being in a couple of car accidents in the past, sometimes I have limited mobility and like range of motion isn't always there. You can kind of see it in my arms are weird. But anyway, um, using the body weight resistance that's already there, like, can provide incredible benefits. And to not need to go like really, you can, if you look up, like there's even just not to go like way too off tangent here, different videos of like push ups and planking workouts using the body weight that's already there that you get some like, woo, it's, you look at it, you're like, wow, that was only body weight resistance. Yeah, it, it's yeah. impressive. So work, work with what's already here. I, I agree. Uh, calisthenics is amazing. Um, yeah. you, you, I, th I think that you put yourself in a position to like create injury when yeah. you, when you use, you know, outside weights and things like that. Obviously there's a, there's a right way to do it, but I think for most people, it's just so much safer, so much easier. There's less right. hassle. You don't need a gym. Um, but and you know, it just those yeah, makes a lot bands are fantastic. Um, I have over here is my little like workout area. Um, let me see if I can turn my camera a little bit. So I've got a, one of those vibration machines that, um, I stand on and it does like the lymphatic kind of workout oh, um, okay. I do that for 10 minutes, uh, twice a day. And I love it. I'm obsessed. Yeah. That's, I do like my dance kind of workout. I crank the music and I'm like, mm, yeah. mm, get it. it <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Now, getting that lymphatic system moving, that that is I, that is key. I will say that, you know, when it does come to fasting, if you can if you can get that lymphatic system moving, just do a, some some brisk walking or just yoga or, so, you know, something. It doesn't have to be high intensity, low intensity. Just get that lymphatic system moving. That's very important. Um, uh, A.D. Max said it should be 30 years, 38 years of age. 
I like that. There I we like go. That. I there like we go. It. All right. Um, let's see. This we'll take this last one and then we're gonna wrap it up because I don't want this, you know what I'm saying, get too too long. What's oh, your yeah. suggestion? What's your suggestion for how to get started and stay consistent? Just joining. Make sure to watch the replay. I'll say that. But Vicky, what's your suggestion for getting started and staying consistent? Um, I mentioned this in my podcast um, in my first few episodes, and I called them my three pillars. So mm -hmm. the pillars that I have are you have to have a solid reason why. Why are you mm -hmm. doing this? What is your pushing like Indiana Jones boulder? What's your why? What's your why? Right. Your why? Hold on to it. Let it be massive. It's got to be huge. It's got to be something that makes you cry. At least mm -hmm. that's what I feel. Um, two, you have to educate yourself on the method. You don't have to go like full nerd like me, or if you want to, go for it. Um, find out what is going on with this process and understand what you're stepping into. Um, and third is you have to find what's going to keep you going, like what's going to be your pleasure center of this what's going to be something that keeps you like feeling your mojo throughout the process um whether it's keeping yourself challenged like i throughout this process i also i'm very amateur and i don't i'm not doing the like professional level at all but i've taught myself how to play the piano and that's been like what um yeah. set goals and things to improve and you know work on throughout this entire process um because it's going to be where your mindset and hyper fixation towards food, if that's what you were an emotional eater like me, where as soon as you're done eating, you're thinking about your next meal. Like we have to get out. If we want changes, we have to get away from that. Give yourself a project list, collaborate. Like what's going to be something that brings you that happiness. Um, mm. so those three things, absolutely essential. And they'll grow yep. and evolve and change over time. Right. They're always going to be changing, which is why it's important to be intentional about documenting your journey, be, oh, you yes. know what I mean? Checking in with yourself daily. And also, as you mentioned earlier, celebrate the little victories. That's very yes. important. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think I think we nailed it. We knocked it out of the park tonight. Yo, make sure to like the video, y'all. You know, make sure to like it so everybody can kind of get in, see this. Um, I'm, my goal is to do more videos like this, go live so we can interact and have fun. This was amazing. Vicky, please make sure to give everybody your socials. That's a thing now. What's your it, socials? Like, it's so, so weird. It's like, I, I've got it. it. And this is an Achilles heel for me because I feel like there's always more that I can do, but I don't want to be like, eh, like flooding everybody. But my business that I'm going to school for, that I'm in the process of building um, to help folks to be the change that I wish to see in the world to help folks get their life back um, through integrating a fasting focused lifestyle is the fasting focused lifestyle.com is my website. All my links are there. I have Spotify and Apple host my podcasts right now. Um, I'm in the process of catching that up as well. Um, my ins I've got Instagram, not very often on TikTok. Uh, but Facebook, I'm definitely on there. My personal page, as you can see, my name, Vicki Sharon, and The Fasting Focus Lifestyle on Facebook as well. So I'm super passionate about what I do. I love sharing my art and heart with the world through my first business, but even more so taking components of that um, that can allow me to continue to be a um, person who I am authentically to let folks know you can change your life if you want to through this lifestyle. Um, it's beautiful. It's a worthwhile journey that you can do for yourself because you deserve it you absolutely deserve it facts and i'm a hugger i get virtual facts. hugs virtual hugs <laughs> if you all enjoyed this video once again hit the like button wherever you're following us right now if you're on youtube subscribe if you're on facebook make sure to join our uh, aha family a healthy alternative on facebook group uh, we've got a lot in the works right now so stay locked in and with that being said, as always, the application of knowledge is power, and we will see you all next time.